The Nintendo Game Boy Advance was originally released in the US on June 11, 2001. I remember this day like it was yesterday. I pre-ordered the handheld months prior from Electronics Boutique and a handful of games, Dodgeball Advance, Fire Pro Wrestling, and of course, Super Mario Advance. Waited outside the store for an hour prior to opening, I was beyond excited to get the new Nintendo handheld after having been playing the original Game Boy and Color version for many years, it was time. The Game Boy Advance seemed like a portable Super Nintendo to me. It was just damn amazing. The only thing missing was the screen had no backlight, but this was later remedied with front light mods and then the eventual Game Boy Advance SP that had a built-in backlight. The Game Boy Advance definitely holds a soft spot in my heart after all these years. It was such a nice upgrade from the original Game Boy and also being backwards compatible with those older games made this handheld a dream to me. Now with retro gaming booming like crazy, what is old is new again. A lot of people are either enjoying these older games again or they are discovering them for the first time. And there are tons of options available to us to enjoy games from the original Game Boy and Game Boy Advance library. But today, we're gonna be taking a look at a very new option that I think a lot of people will enjoy. The Game Boy Advance Consolizer from Woozle. This project's been on my radar for quite some time and now it's finally available to the public. So the Game Boy Advance Consolizer is available either as a DIY kit or as a pre-assembled product ready to be used from Game Tech US. We'll put a link in the description. So the Game Boy Advance consoleizer is exactly what it sounds like it is. It consoleizes an original Game Boy Advance, allowing you to play your GBA, Game Boy, or Game Boy Color games on a modern display via HDMI using the original board from a standard Game Boy Advance system. It supports 720p digital video output with video at 60 hertz VSync with no screen tearing or stutter to be seen. You guys know. We cannot stand that screen tearing, man. So there's also plenty of visual options that we'll also be taking a look at in a moment. Uh, but this console also features an on-screen display that you can access by pressing down and selecting the controller to get to those options. The system uses a Super Nintendo controller port to give you several options for your controls. You can use original or third-party SNES controllers or even go wireless and use the 8-bit though retro receiver and a variety of Bluetooth controllers such as 8-bit those SNES styled controllers, a Wii U Pro controller, or even a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. Pretty sweet. So today we are going to take a look at some gameplay footage from this consoleizer and also compare it to a little bit of footage from the Game Boy player using Eon's GCHD Mark II HDMI adapter for the GameCube. I think this will be the most fair comparison when looking at different options of playing Game Boy Advance on your modern TV. So that's why we're going to be taking a look at that as well. So this console, it does use micro USB for power and a mini HDMI for video output. You can just use USB if you have it on your TV and plug it into your system. So that is pretty cool. I've been using it with an external uh, power bank to power it up, have had no issues. It also maintains the original port for a link cable and the headphone jack for audio if needed. I have tried the consoleizer on several TVs without any issues whatsoever, but being a YouTuber, capturing video, did have some issues with my capture card as the system needed to have some settings tweaked in order for me to get the video and audio for this video that I'm uploading now. So it has a DVI plus mode that I needed to disable in order to get visuals through my capture card. And I also had to use a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable in order to get audio from the headphone jack to my capture device. Like I said, I had no issues with the DVI plus mode uh, delivering audio and video through HDMI on any of my other displays. This was just a capture card issue for me. So depending on your TV, this may or may not be a problem but it seems to be an issue for people wanting to capture gameplay. You will have to, you know, deal with those workarounds. Otherwise, I've had no issues. So let's go ahead and get this party started by taking a look at some of our options we have in user settings. So in order to get into the menu, we do hold down and select on our controller. 
And that brings us straight into the consoleizer menu with video wizard system and about options with the firmware listed on the bottom left of the display for the system that you're on. So we're on version 1.0.2. So in these settings, up and down on the D-pad, goes ahead and selects the option A goes into it. So in video, we do have a few options. These are probably the more important ones. So we do have a smooth option. We can either have this off or have it on two or four X. So this option uses an edge aware upscaling method to go ahead and smooth out jagged edges in the image as the image size is increased. Using smooth two X will apply two X nearest neighbor followed by the scale two X algorithm for an effective zoom of 4X. Using the smooth 4X will further enhance the smooth 2X option by applying interpolation to the smoothed out corners and edges. So some people will dig this, some people will not. You can see the the you know varying difference here. I prefer no smooth, I just like having it off. I like to see them, they're pixels. That's what does it for me. Might not do it for you, but hey, it is cool to have those options there. So next up, we do have zoom. This controls how big the image appears on your screen. So 4X and 5X applies nearest neighbor integer scaling and 4.5X applies bilinear scaling to the source GBA image. 5X is recommended for Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. But here we go, 4X zoom is what we are defaulted in, 4.5. So you can see what kind of a difference there is there. And then 5X, cutting off some of the image there. So definitely not recommended for Game Boy Advance, but for Game Boy and Game Boy Color, that will be pretty nice. So I will be leaving this at 4X for Game Boy Advance. Next up, we do have some shaders and I find this pretty interesting. This allows the user to modify the color of the image to better match the original LCDs used in various handhelds. So Game Boy Advance shader, uh, Nintendo DS shader, PSP shader or custom. Uh, so that is where you would go back into the wizard uh, option and change out the colors there. Pretty cool stuff. Or you can just put it off. Uh, Game Boy Advance, it, it's just kind of, it's going to just be all up to preference here. These games were designed with how the Game Boy Advance screen was and how it didn't have a backlight. So they tried their best to, you know, color these games a certain way. That's why you see a lot of these games. Uh, with hacks for restoration of colors and whatnot. So it's really just gonna be your preference and what you put it on. But if we do go to custom, we can go to wizard and just start tweaking with some things. You can get real crazy with this if, if you really want to. Uh, you know, I don't really have much of a reason to want to jump into this, but some people might. Some people might like to, you know, find that, that sweet spot and change things up the way they want. But for me, I think it'll just probably be best to stick with one of the presets there. Um, but let's go ahead and go back into that. So shader, we had that custom one on. Now we're gonna turn it off. So standard is gonna be Game Boy Advance. Uh, if you put it off, it does look a little brighter, but I'm gonna leave it at Game Boy Advance right now. So, or just leave it at that as is. Uh, the next option is gamma. This option applies a nonlinear brightness correction to the image and can only be used when a shader option is selected. So it does nothing if you have it set off for the shader. So we're trying to take a look at that. Let's let the screen readjust and you see the, uh, the gamma kind of messes with the brightness a little bit. Uh, so definitely cool to have options here. Get it to how you like it. Now the palette option, we can't really utilize that until we are in a Game Boy game, but we're gonna go ahead and show that now. So with our color palette options, this is for use with original Game Boy games only. The option allows you to swap out the original four tone color palette used by those games with 35 preset palette options available. The other cool thing too is that you can use the color wizard option to really customize the colors and you really have infinite possibilities with that. So besides the 35 included palettes, you could really mess around with that to your heart's content. Now you may notice looking at this footage, I have captured this off camera instead of using a capture card. 
couple of reasons for that. But the main reason was playing Game Boy or Game Boy Color games would not play well with any of the three capture cards that I have. Would not capture footage. Everything was out of range no matter what I did, no matter which DVI setting I used. So just wanted to, you know, make note of that. It did work on any TV that I plugged it in. I tried four different TVs and monitors. Every monitor I've used, every TV I've used, just direct HDMI, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance work just fine. So if you want to use this for capturing purposes, definitely look into more information on compatibility with capture cards because the ones I have, I have two Elgatos and an Avermedia and they do not work very well with this specifically Game Boy, Game Boy Color. But the other thing I do want to point out here, as you're already seeing, is I do have the scan line options going. And wow, I am really impressed with this. The way the scan lines look, it's, it's amazing. I'm not a person who really ever cared for scan lines and any of the options we've had, like with emulation or you know the, the open source scan converter or anything else that would allow you to use scan lines for your games. I've never really bothered. But with this, the way they have it set up, there's several different options, pretty much the depth of the scan lines. But the way they have it set up is horizontal and vertical. And it really, when you, you look really up close, I'll zoom back in in a moment here. It, it looks amazing. It looks like you're really playing on a you know, a Game Boy or a Game Boy Advance LCD screen, but just blown up on a bigger screen on your, your modern television. So I was really impressed with that, just the way it looks. Everything is so sharp and crisp. Just look at them pixels. <laughs> so, so far, everything I have played, uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, everything is really sharp, really great looking. The colors are just popping. Really have nothing to complain about other than like I said, the issues with capturing, the workarounds you have to do, those kind of things. But I don't necessarily think this product is, is going to be for people who just want to capture footage. We do have those other options out there. Uh, you know, you could capture footage using emulation or the Game Boy Player on the, the GameCube, that kind of stuff. And we will take a look at some comparison footage in a moment to give you an idea of, you know, what one looks like versus the other. Both the Game Boy Player and the Game Boy Advance Consoleizer, they're, they're hardware solutions. The Game Boy Player is not emulation. Essentially, it's a Game Boy Advance built into that part that attaches to your, your GameCube. So definitely keep that in mind uh, for whatever the best option for you is. For me, I'm really digging this Game Boy Advance Consoleizer. I like how it's small. Just plug it in, start playing your games. You don't have to have any other things attached to it. You know, with the GameCube, I do have to use the Eon uh, GCHD Mark II to play on my modern TV, which is not a huge deal, but those things do add up. And that's going to be another thing we talk about in a moment after I show some comparisons is the price. What does this cost for the kit versus buying a pre-made system? So let's get some GameCube footage up and talk about it. So here's a little bit of footage of one of my most favorite Game Boy Advance games, Advance Wars running on the Game Boy Player on the GameCube using the stock disc. I do not have the Game Boy interface, and I figured it'd be best just to take a look at what's most readily and easily available to people. And you will notice some differences here. It doesn't look too bad on the Game Boy Player, but let's go ahead and switch on over to the same intro on the Game Boy Advance consoleizer and then throw them up at the same time. Let's take a look. So here's the same intro on the Game Boy Advance consoleizer, and holy crap, does everything look a lot more sharper, brighter, just cleaner. The stock Game Boy player, things look a little washed out, a little more dull, and it wasn't anything that ever really bothered me until I'm playing on the consoleizer, and I'm just like, wow, this looks crazy. So definitely the win as far as visuals go go to the Game Boy Advance consoleizer. Let's put up both at the same time and talk about it a little more. So the side-by-side, -side, it's pretty damn obvious that the Game Boy Advance consoleizer looks legit. It is using original hardware, so this is not a clone system. This is not emulation. This is the legit official Game Boy Advance just using this mod. So the question is gonna be, is this gonna be for you? 
the price, this is the thing a lot of people are gonna be talking about. The base kit is gonna cost anywhere from 140, maybe 180 bucks, depending upon options. You can get a full case kit, get the 3D printed enclosure, all that kind of stuff, and just do the work yourself or find a modder to do it for you. One person who's done a lot of mod work for me is uh, Dragon's Horde Gaming. Hit him up. I'll put some links out there if you want to talk to him. He's done my Dreamcast, my Wii, um, and he's going to be working on some other stuff for me as well. But yeah, you can save some money just buying the kit and having a Game Boy Advance ready to go. I would say the mod work isn't necessarily advanced level, expert level stuff. If you have some experience, this may be a fairly easy mod for you to do. There's a lot of tutorials out there, videos and guides, and it doesn't seem like that crazy amount of work. Some people aren't comfortable with that or have experience, so they would like to get either a pre-assembled kit or pay somebody to do it. You can get a pre-assembled kit from Game Tech USA uh, US for 350 bucks. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, that's a crazy amount of money, but it is pretty much a convenience cost. You're paying for somebody to source all the parts and do all the work for you. So yes, you're gonna pay a little bit more, but you can save that money and go about it the other way. Or you could just stick with a Game Boy player and be happy with that. You know, using a GCHD from Eon is a little pricey as well. Uh, getting a Game Boy player, if you don't already have one with the disc, you're getting around that price range once you get everything ready to go. But it's just all gonna depend on you. What do you want out of this? And for me, my choice is gonna be the Game Boy Advance Consolizer. Now, this is not my system. This was lent to me just to do this video, but in the end, I have to decide, is this something I would purchase myself? And yes, yes, it is. So I think that kind of speaks volumes. I would more likely get the kit and have somebody do the work for me, but hey, the choice is yours. So really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I hope this video helped. With that said, I will catch you guys next time. Peace out, bye bye and boom. Bye. Have a good one, guys.